Hey guys, so it's been on my mind to share like a little follow-up video on my testimony video, which I shared oh, almost a year ago already. That's crazy. Time flies by so fast. Um, and my thought was just to have like a candid conversation with you guys about what it's been like after, right? Like, because I hope this won't be like all over the map, but I've had so many good conversations with people since putting that video out there. And I really felt like there is a need for more conversation um, around just kind of what that process can look like, especially if you um, are coming out of a big I don't want to call it a cult necessarily, but if you're coming out of a structure that is so embedded into your identity, um, it's like, it's a process to, to get out of that, right? Um, and I think a lot, like this is my experience of what it's been like since then. Um, it's, I know it's not like this for everybody. I think a lot of it has to do with, for one thing, your experiences. Another thing is your beliefs, both when you were in it and then as you come out, like how that transition unfolds. Maybe it has to do with your um, personality some, how you internalize things. Um, definitely, if you've accepted Jesus as your savior, <laughs> It's going to be easier in many regards. Not easy, but maybe easier in some ways. Um, that's just my perspective and how I see things. Okay, so <sighs> it's not easy. I think many of you who have reached out to me and have... Um, shared some of your story with me, um, know that already. It's not easy. It's not easy to leave a group of people that you almost, you're so identified with them that you, you feel like, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, at your core of who you are is that. Like, I, it's so interesting. Like, obviously, I I don't even know where I'm going with this video, to be honest. I didn't prepare for this. I didn't write anything down. I didn't write specific scriptures that I want to share. I didn't really write any points. So we're just going to see what happens. But basically, how it was for us is that I left the church first, the church I was raised in, which is the FALC. I left it first because... I, some of this is a little overlap on my testimony, but because I knew after my daughter died, God didn't only work in this one box, right? And But I didn't really know what that meant as I, you know, so it was like, ooh, you know, trying to figure it out. And that that's just how it was for me. And I think that's how it is for a lot of people. So one thing that you have to remember is... Um, once you are out of it, or maybe if you're still in there and you want to try to understand people who are maybe having a hard time with a belief system, or maybe you're just having a hard time relating with them, is that um, to have grace for people, like where they are at, and to not be, I guess, trying to force them to see things from your perspective even though you want to share and you want to help them and you want to relate to them, you can't really force somebody to see something strictly through your vantage point, right? It's just not realistic. So, um, I don't know where I was going with that thought, but really, it it is very, very challenging to come out of that type of situation. And I think you feel, or at least for me, I felt like I was um, basically flying, flying in an airplane thousands of feet off the ground, 
and deciding to jump out of that airplane not knowing what's going to happen. And so I understand why people don't want to go through that experience. Like, you don't really know what's going to happen once you jump out. And you don't, maybe people don't allow themselves to count the cost of leaving a belief system that's a part of their identity because they don't even allow themselves to consider the cost, like to count the cost. What's going to happen once I jump out of this plane? And I guess I, I don't know why I was one person who just jumped anyways. <laughs> I guess I'm, I guess I probably have always been somebody who on some level anyways would question things and not totally accept the status quo. I, I haven't. Like, even though I was a people pleaser, I still didn't love to just go along with things without pressing into them. Like, I, I've always been the type that I, I love to have deep conversations with people. I love to know them at their core to the extent that they're willing. Um, I like to, uh, I like to think in the big picture and to see things, to try to understand things, right, to the best of my ability. So... I don't know. I do. I jumped, and it it was a free fall for a while. <laughs> Woo! Okay, and that is scary when you're when everything that you are is wrapped up into one thing, and you choose to not um, go with that anymore. You you will put your body through a lot like it is grief it is anger it is sadness it is confusion you will go through all of those different things um and I really believe that you will go through those things whether Jesus is in your life or yet or not because there's a lot of grief that happens when you um when you leave something that you always thought was going to be a part of you forever. So it's very hard to come out. And also, it's also very freeing to come out. And I don't mean that like in a derogatory way. I mean, you don't know the bondage that you're in until you're out. Like, I didn't know how much my behavior... Um, how, I want to think how I say this, I don't want to say this in the wrong way, but my, my true questions, my true, my deepest fears, my deepest longings, like the things that, that were so deep inside me that I could never bring to the table in really any of my relationships. I didn't realize those things were under such a tight box until I was out. And then once I was out, I had to go through all of that other stuff. Anger, grief, sadness, confusion, despair. And it's fine. Like, I survived. And and if, you have, are you, if you're going through a similar thing, you'll survive too. Um, I think... The enemy, though, will really try to use this time to really try to manipulate you, to torment you. If you're not in the Word, in the Bible, and if you're not seeking God's will for your life, he will try to really destroy you because you've left what you knew, but now what? Like, what are you clinging to now? Like, are you clinging to your flesh? Are you clinging to the world? Are you clinging to your own reasoning? Like, your own ideas? Like, what are you clinging to? And so, it definitely helped a lot once I realized that I needed to just seek God's direction for my life. And he can help heal the past. And he can help move me through those different seasons of grief, sadness, anger. Like he, he's not expecting me to be a perfect person, but he's also holding me accountable 
um, on some level, right? Like he's not saying, well, you can act however you want now because, you know, you have freedom and you can just you can just badmouth people back to them or whatever. If they're saying bad things about you, no, you just go and trash them. No, like that's not how God calls us to live. And I think whether we know Jesus or not, we have that knowledge because we are born with a conscience, right? So we have that knowledge that that's not okay to repay evil with evil. But it is challenging. Um, I found myself really longing to cling to other people's ideas still after I got out and I, I recognize like looking back now like it that stemmed from my own insecurities um just wanting to jump on different bandwagons like I'll jump on this bandwagon or I'll jump on this you know oh this this sounds really good or like this person you know and you know what it's it's a time where you almost step back and you seek God, or at least for me, the stepping back and seeking him first, and then allowing him to direct my path forward from that point. So I'm just kind of talking a little bit. Um, obviously, I did become born again. I did accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I, ch I left and I chose the Christian life still. I didn't, didn't want to, um, I didn't want to reject everything that I was brought up with, right? So so what does that mean now, right? That can be very like, whoa, especially when you're raised somewhere where you're taught that if you walk, at least this is what I believe. I don't know if anybody told me this. I don't know how I internalize this, but if I walked into another church building besides the FALC, I felt in my body that I was going to be going to hell and God was going to be judging me for that. And that that was one of the worst sins I could possibly commit against him. Which is just crazy looking back. But that's where I was, right? So how do you leave and then how do you find community and fellowship knowing that's what God wants us to have? Because it says in the Bible, do not forsake um, the gathering, do not forsake assembly, do not forsake all these amazing things that he has for us in the church, which is uh, baptism, communion, um, gathering together, encouraging each other, building each other up in the word, you know. So I knew I, I wanted those things, but it was incredibly scary to go and find that. And I, I wanted somebody to kind of like, I just wanted to like hang on to someone and kind of just, can I just follow you around and... You know, even though I didn't want that, I there's that fear that or that feeling that that was what I was used to doing already. So that's kind of what I was comfortable with. You know, it's so crazy and interesting. So I wanted that, but I also didn't want that. <laughs> and then you have like my husband. We're still trying to figure things out as far as like we're on different spiritual journeys because we're individuals, but we're also a family unit and. I want to respect him and where he's at. So, you know, it, there's a lot going on at once. But finally, I got to the place where I was like, okay, you know, just reading the Bible, I'm like, God is not going to strike me dead for going to another church. In fact, he tells me that I must go and have fellowship and worship him with other believers. And now that I understand what that means, I can actually seek that out. Um, but it is still very scary. It was very hard for me to trust people and to like open up in like a normal, healthy way. Like I would either just like, Bleh, or I would just like kind of shut down because I would, I, I just had so much fears and anxieties and, um, it did. It took us a while to figure that out and to find a place that that we felt this is where God wants us to be. And now we do have a church family. Praise God. We have a group of believers that are family. We're, of course, anyone who's brothers and sisters in Christ, no matter your denomination, if, you're, if you've placed your um, faith in Christ alone, you know you're my brother or sister in faith. But I wanted still a local body to attend, to bring my children to, 
to grow and encourage each other and grow and it's been so good for us. So we did, we did find that and God's been so good to us. And I guess looking back now, now that I've been out for eight, 10 years, now when I look back, I see my fears, while they were valid at the time, they weren't <laughs> because in my mind, I'm like, if I leave, I won't have anybody. I don't, I'm not really close with anybody. I have kind of shut myself off from relationships with worldly Christians. So I guess I'm just an island by myself now. And I'm, I'm afraid to talk about theology or doctrine with other people because I'm afraid it's just going to be like this, which I found out it does not need to be, which is really cool and refreshing. So yeah, I, I would just encourage you um, that, you know, what you feel like the anxiety that you go through when you leave a group that's your identity, that's not going to stay that way forever. You might still have that come up occasionally, just if with different conflicts or, you know, family stuff comes up, but it's not going to define you forever. Like you're, you will have a life and it will be amazing and it will be what God intended for you if you seek him and choose to follow him, right? Instead of your fears, your anxieties, your desires, whatever. So I will say that it's been 99% amazing. Yes, there have been challenges. There have been hard times. There have been um, things that we've gone through. But you know what? Like those hard times have been awesome seasons for growth and I recognize that like looking back like those times where I just like felt maybe targeted or felt um whether it's just judged or whatever those are those are refining moments for you to choose how you're going to react in those situations and they're actually really healthy for us to go through of course none of us want to go through that but it's not a bad thing it's not something we should be afraid of um I feel like I could do a whole nother video on how to help, um, especially if you're a, a believer, how you could possibly help someone specifically who's coming out of a Lestadian branch of religion, because I find that they are, they have a lot in common, the different sex, you know, the different branches. And there's a lot, there's a lot of ways that you can help them and that you can encourage them and there's also ways that you can i'm i'm sure i've done it but there's ways you can um you can hurt them there's ways you can discourage them so you don't want to be like you don't want to be that you know so um the main thing is God is so good and he is very faithful. He is so faithful. And the lies that I believed that I wouldn't have friends, I wouldn't have family, I wouldn't have fellowship if I left my identity, my identity of a faith group was a lie from the enemy because I have friends, I have family, I have fellowship. Um, it's not like a generational church where everything's just like, you just step into your role and this is automatically assumed and you just do it. You know, there's, that's kind of nice in a way, like to have that, but also there's ways that's not so nice because are you, are you trusting the Holy Spirit to show you how to um, participate in the fellowship? Are you trusting the Holy Spirit to show you what your role is in the church? Um, how are you using your spiritual gifts to build up and encourage other believers that you are gathering with? And so if you're not doing those things, like if you're not teaching, um, you know, not teaching, but if you're not encouraging, if you're not praying for each other, if you're not meeting together, if you're not worshiping together, you are really, really, really missing out on a huge blessing that God has for you. Um, 
from his body. And I just, I really want to encourage you that there are biblical churches out there. Yes, it might be hard to find. And yes, you might not agree with everything, every single theological thing that they stand for because probably none of us agree on like every single detail. But if they preach the gospel, salvation is by grace alone, um, through faith alone, in Christ alone, and they're seeking after God's will for their life and for their church, then that's the kind of teaching you want to get under and you want to submit yourself to. Um, and you want to be with those people who have that heart for Jesus and for truth and for each other. So you can still have that fellowship and community, um, but it may not look exactly like what you're used to. And you may have to be out of your comfort zone to get that because the songs might be different than you're used to. The environment might be a little different than you're used to. The, the preaching style might be a little different than you're used to. But those are all really minor things. Like those are very cultural things. And our culture does not define us. So I hope that kind of helps someone out there who's maybe afraid to jump out of the airplane wondering if like who's going to catch me like maybe you've already been saved and born again but you're not sure you can leave the environment that you're in or the identity that you have in this group I just want to encourage you that the environment that you are in as well as the teaching that you submit yourself to really does affect your spiritual life it really does because you can feel like oh I, I i'm an island i can do this on my own like it's just me and jesus which that is true like your your salvation is only between you and him however how does satan like to attack us he attacks us through our weaknesses and if we're not submitting to truthful teaching and we're not in a place where we're constantly being convicted and having truth spoken into us and that we're able to freely encourage and rebuke and all of that with each other it's going to affect your spiritual walk so i just want to encourage you guys that you know when it's not a race like seek god and his timing and there's situations like in marriages and whatnot you don't just do whatever you wish you have to be very prayerful about it and and seek god and see what he wants for you but there's life. There is a lot of life. And it's awesome. Not perfect, not easy, but awesome. So just want to encourage you in that. I hope you have a great day. We'll see ya. Bye-bye.